In this video, I'm going to show you how to take these live streaming PTZ cameras from CCTV Camera World and get them connected to your internet connection so you can start live streaming to your website or your social media channel. I'm going to explain to you the different kind of PTZ cameras we have to offer for live streaming. These are smaller form factor cameras. They're small in size, maximum four times zoom, available in 1080p or 2K resolution usually. This is a larger camera that is available anywhere from 1080p to 4K resolution. You can have it with no zoom or with 25 times zoom, depending on what we have to offer at that time. They're all PoE cameras, so you can power them with ease using an RJ45 connection right there. There are some additional optional connections on these cameras, like this one has an optional audio input. You can use a two lead bare wire connection using special connectors to tie an external audio mic. Now this one has a built-in audio microphone on it, and you can add an external mic if the internal one does not suffice for your use. This has no microphone. This one has no microphone built in, but its pigtail offers you certain connections where you can add, for example, on the red and white, uh, external microphone on this one. You can put a uh, alarm input if you wanted to get fancy with your security needs. But if you're live streaming, you're most likely just gonna be using the RJ45 connection right here, connecting your ethernet cable, connecting it to your PoE injector or PoE switch, and then to your internet, which I'm gonna show you in a second. All of the cameras have a 12 volt barrel jack connection. Please don't cut it off. You don't have to use it if you're using PoE. So you can just leave this alone. Now, among these other external connections on the big PTZs, you really need to just add a microphone on here using optional connections we offer for a, a microphone if you want audio on your stream. Some streamers don't need audio, so you don't need to put in a mic. Alarm, most users are not using any alarm inputs on there, so you can just leave this alone. As far as mounting goes, like I said, they're all weatherproof outdoor rated cameras. These are usually ceiling mount, like I said. You can buy an optional wall mount. If you're making your own mount, you just gotta make sure that the top of each of these small cameras is flush with some sort of surface on top. Otherwise, what happens is you can actually have a little bit of water or condensation developing, which fogs up the camera. You gotta be careful about that. This saucer type camera is really weather tight. It has built in infrared that turn on at nighttime. And uh, it comes, it's more of like a smoke detector design. This is really weather tight. You can actually use a metal plate that it comes with to mount it to a flat surface on top. We also have an optional wall mount for this. Now this one, mounting it, pretty simple. This is what we classify as an outdoor PTZ camera or Pantel zoom camera. This one specifically, you know, like these other two has live streaming capabilities that you can use to stream to either Twitch or YouTube. For this wall mount PTZ, I'm quickly gonna show you how to connect it to its wall mount. There's a flat notch here that some people seem to ignore. You wanna make sure you note that, and it's already here on the wall mount as well. So what you do is you thread your pigtail through. So I thread my pigtail through the, the wall mount from the camera. Make sure you're not tugging on this pigtail because you're gonna break it here. Be careful. So now that I've got the wall mount connected to the top of the PTZ, there's some bolts that come in the box to connect the wall mount to the camera itself. Make sure you use that, otherwise it's gonna fall down. Then use proper bolts to connect this to your wall or your pole. There are optional pole mounts we offer as well. And that's pretty much it on how to mount these cameras. In size, this is how big this camera looks relative to the other ones. Obviously this camera is bigger because it comes with usually an optical zoom lens. Now that I've shown you the basics of what our live stream PoE cameras have to offer, let me show you how to get one connected to the internet. This is a detailed overview of how you connect our live stream PTZ cameras from CCTV Camera World to the internet. I've got one of the PTZ cameras that's a PoE powered PTZ. Most of our cameras are PoE powered. All you need to do is use only the RJ45 connector, use a network cable, and use a PoE injector to provide power and data to the camera. You can also use a switch here. The premise is the same. You can have multiple cameras on a switch. This is a PoE injector. You would connect the PoE injector to power. This stays indoors, and you would run a long ethernet cable back to the camera. Another ethernet cable connects from the data out on the PoE injector into your router. The router's LAN port is where you specifically want to connect it. On this router, they're marked by yellow ports. This is the local area network. And then the blue cable here is going to my internet connection. Of course, the router has to be powered itself to make sure it's sending data. 
So in here, I want to emphasize that only one cable goes to the camera, thanks to PoE technology. All you need to do is run one Ethernet cable. It could be Cat5e or Cat6. Make sure you're using the right type of cable. Normal Cat5e like this or Cat6 is indoor rated. If you're burying the cable, make sure you use direct burial cable. If you're having the wire exposed to UV light, make sure you use outdoor rated network cable. The 12 volt power connection on the camera does not get used. You do not need this at all, but don't cut it either because it comes handy in testing. Like I said, this needs to be indoors. This could be up to 300 feet away. If you need to go farther, we have demonstrations on how to use PoE extenders to put this camera up to even 900 feet away if you needed to. The pigtail on a, any camera, PTZ or otherwise, it's not weather resistant. Make sure you enclose this in a junction box. And this connection in between your cable going to the camera and the pigtail, make sure you protect this from the elements. There are gold pins inside. If they get exposed to moisture, they will rust and you'll lose data and power connectivity. If your PTZ has several leads on the pigtail, you don't have to worry. If you're not attaching an external microphone, all you need to do is just run one ethernet cable. As mentioned in our overview videos, this PTZ camera is a ceiling mount. It would go in a flat surface on top like this. There are optional wall mounts and even pole mounts available for our PTZ cameras. If you're using a larger PTZ camera, don't be fooled by the size of the camera. The connection is exactly the same. Before you go and mount your PTZ camera, we do recommend that you do a bench test like this indoors to get yourself acquainted with the equipment and you know what you need to do once you're gonna be outside on a ladder installing the camera. And also you, then you know how to connect it to live streaming so you know it's working for you before you go and mount it. After connecting all these connections, you do have to configure IP address information on the cameras. We can set the cameras to DHCP, but you should be using a static IP address on a camera on your local network. That's not an external static IP, just a local network static IP. So you know what's the camera's IP address and you can locate it if you need to on your network. You do get best results for streaming if you have a high speed internet connection with a static IP externally as well, but it is not completely necessary. At least high speed internet is if you're trying to stream 1080p or higher resolutions. You're gonna need a live stream account on twitch.tv using an email address, username and password. And you're also gonna to wanna to go to the web interface for your security camera. Here you can see I've logged into the default IP address for our security cameras. Last but not least, you're gonna to wanna to open up a notepad so you can copy and paste your stream key. First, we're gonna to go to the Twitch website. And then inside of the Twitch website, we're gonna click on our profile icon at the top right hand side. And then we're gonna click on the creator dashboard. It's gonna take us to the back end user settings for our stream. And then we're gonna to wanna to go to the stream manager tab on the left hand side. Inside of the stream manager tab, we're gonna to wanna to go to the edit stream info button. And here you can give your stream a title. Here I'm just going to name it live stream test. And then I'm going to click done. It's going to update the stream title. Now, in order to start streaming, I'm going to need to go to the settings tab and then the stream option. Here, there is going to be a primary stream key that I'll need to show. Click OK to allow it to show. Then I'm going to need to click the copy button. It's going to copy it to my clipboard on my computer. I'm going to open my notepad. I'm going to right click and click paste. This is going to be your stream key for your Twitch stream. We're going to need to pair this with what's called an ingest server URL from Twitch. So I'm going to open a new tab, go to google.com and Google Twitch ingest server. Here is a first link called Twitch ingest recommendations on Twitch TV. Here we can see there are a lot of different options. There's US East Ashburn, Virginia, another Ashburn, Virginia location, in New York City. These locations, however, are chosen based on the test that the web page runs when you first open it. You will want to make sure you select one of the best options that's listed at the top of the recommendations list. 
Ashburn, Virginia is the closest ingest server to where I am in the United States, and you will want to select one of these options, which is the closest to you in the United States, for the best performance. So I'm going to copy everything up until it says stream key. And then I'm going to right click, click copy, come back down to my notepad, I'm going to hit the enter key, and then I'm going to paste. To finish creating my RTMP URL, I'm going to copy this again, I'm going to enter down, I'm going to right click and paste, then I'm going to copy my stream key by highlighting it, right clicking, clicking copy, and then after the RTMP URL, I can right click and paste. Now I've successfully created my RTMP URL. If you are tech savvy, you'll be able to create this URL a lot quicker. However, I'm just showing how you can copy and paste it and then combine them together. So I'm going to need to copy this whole stream key by right clicking and clicking copy. Now I can finally go to the tab where I'm logging into my camera and then log into my camera. I'm just using the default username and password from the factory. I click login to log in. It's going to pull up the stream from my camera. And to enable live streaming, I'm going to first need to go to the settings tab at the top right hand side. I'm going to need to go to the network and then TCP IP settings. You want to make sure that you do have valid DNS settings in here. We recommend using the 8.8.8.8 .8 for the preferred DNS and 8.8.4.4 for the alternate DNS. The second setting you want to make sure that it's enabled is under Access Platform and then P2P. You want to check this box to enable it and click the Save button and then click the Refresh button until you receive an online status. After a few seconds of refreshing, I received an online status and this means my camera is now ready to stream to Twitch. To finish starting that stream, I will need to click on the RTMP tab, click this checkbox to enable the RTMP stream, click the address type as custom, and then right click to paste my stream key. I'm going to click save, it's going to give me a prompt saying that it needs to push the video to third party servers, and since we trust Twitch and we know it's going to our Twitch account, I'm going to click OK. It's going to say it's saved, succeeded, and we should be able to see this stream being sent to Twitch. So in order to check that out, we're going to type in our Twitch URL to check out our live stream. So I'm going to type twitch.tv forward slash CCTV camera world. I'm going to hit enter. Twitch was able to ingest our 4K stream and stream it on the Twitch website. If I come down here to the gear icon, and go to the quality option, I can see that we're streaming in 2160p, which is full 4K video. Hopefully you found this video useful. Thanks for watching. If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.